Hi AP Stats guys. I just wanted to do a little recap of some common questions that people ask about the differences between two sample T and two proportion Z and match pairs T. Um, so I'm just going to walk through the formulas and um, show you the similarities and differences and, um, and comparisons. So hopefully this will help clear up a few questions. Um, I'm going to start by making a little table. Um, I'm going to uh, deal with two sample T stuff down this column and then two proportion Z And then over here, we're going to compare intervals to tests. Okay. Um, for your interval formulas, you're always going to have something plus or minus. If it's a T test, you're going to be dealing with a T star. Over here, we're going to have something plus or minus. If it's Z, we're going to have a Z star. I'm going to try to color code this and see if it helps. For two sample, we're dealing with means. So we would be looking at the difference between two means. So it'd be X bar 1, X bar 2, the difference between those. If it's proportions, it would be P1 hat minus P2 hat. Um, I'm kind of hopping around, but maybe you'll see. If you're doing a test, if it's a T test, it's going to be T equals some fraction. And if it's a Z test, it's going to be Z equals some fraction. The blue stuff that I wrote in front here for the intervals, those go on the tops of your test. So it'd be x bar 1 minus x bar 2. And then over here, it would be p1 hat minus p2 hat. All right, then the rest of the formula is going to be um, your standard deviation formula that's found on your, on your um, formula sheet. So for means, the standard deviation formula is a big square root. And then it's S1 squared over N1 plus S2 squared over N2. And this is on your formula sheet. And that is what goes on the bottom, the denominator, of your test statistic. So the exact same stuff. So the most complicated part of the formula is on your formula sheet. You just have to put all the pieces together. Um, then over here for two proportion, the standard deviation part of the formula is again a big square root. You're going to have P1 hat times 1 minus P1 hat over N1 plus P2 hat times 1 minus P2 hat over N2. Now, for your test, it's going to be a slightly different formula. It's very similar, but you use the combined p hat times 1 minus the combined p hat times 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. And the combined p hat is what you get when you take x1 plus x2 over n1 plus n2. And this is on your formula sheet as well. So basically, all the stuff in pink is on the formula sheet. Um, pink. On your formula sheet. Okay, so hopefully that helps you kind of put some of the pieces together for formulas. 
Um, also, just with regards to your calculator, um, this stuff right here on your calculator is called xdiff. And this in your calculator is pdiff. And then remember that you are also given margin of error. So everything that comes after the plus minus, that is your margin of error. So on your calculator, it's ME. So same thing over here. If you do a confidence interval on your calculator, that's your margin of error. And then just remember, you've got that plus or minus. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Um, let's go to a new page. <coughs> I want to talk about the difference between match pairs and two sample. Okay, so we're going to put match pairs over here and two sample over here. <coughs> okay, um, just as a little reminder, we would type in for match pairs, we would type in, let's say we would type in an A list and we would type in a B list. And then what would we do is we would do A minus B. Um, and the calculator would calculate all of those differences for us. And then we would title it diff. And this was the column that we cared about for the whole rest of the problem. We then ignored the first two columns. And this was the only thing we cared about. We referred to this list <coughs> for the whole rest of the problem. And the thing that we care about is the mean of the differences. Um, so you would get your sample mean of A minus B. But then when you write your hypotheses, Remember, you have to write in terms of population symbols, so it would be mu, A minus B. And then the null is that there's no difference, so the difference would equal zero. And then the alternative could be whatever the, the context of the problem says. So it could be a greater than, it could be a less than, or it could be a not equal to. And the wording that we use is the mean difference. Um, indicating singular. <coughs> that there's only one mean that we care about, and it's this mean of the differences. When it's two sample, we're going to have two different means. two completely different independent groups. So that's why you'll have an X bar one and you'll have an X bar two. So this would be like if we looked at ACT scores for BSM versus ACT scores for Apple Valley, let's say. Um, and the wording that we would use is the difference in the means. something that indicates that it's plural, that there are two of them. For your null hypothesis, we would say that there's no difference between the two of them, that the difference is zero. And then for the alternative, we would say that there is some sort of difference. Maybe one is greater than the other or less than the other, or that they don't equal each other. And another way to write that, you could say mu1 equals mu2, 
or you could say mu1 is greater than mu2 or less than mu2 or not equal to mu2. Either any of those work. But the idea is that here there's two of them and here there's only one. <coughs> um, let's see here. Yeah. I think that's all I can think of for right now. Um, depending on the questions that I get in office hours, I can always make other videos that address um, frequently asked questions. But um, hopefully this is a good start. Okay, bye.